As Flint, Michigan deals with its contaminated water, schools in Detroit are dealing with their own contaminants. And uh, we've got the evidence. It's widespread in a number of different forms. Uh, we've got some pictures for you. First, the personal experience of a teacher in Detroit. Nancy Muerhoff, a kindergarten teacher at Carleton Elementary in Detroit, said water from toilets above her classroom has been leaking through her classroom ceiling for over three years Jeez. without being fixed. Her classroom is connected to a dilapidated greenhouse that hasn't been cleaned in years. Muerhoff said her classroom has a distinct odor that gives her frequent headaches. She says that uh, greenhouse, by the way, has some sort of mold or fungus on it. She doesn't even know what, but it looks dangerous. And it doesn't get fixed, even after years. Uh, now, the mayor, Mike Duggan, toured DPS schools uh, just on Tuesday in response to the sick out protests which are going on right now. It's an attempt by teachers to draw attention to uh, the unsafe conditions at these schools. The mayor saw kids with coats on in the classroom, which they're required to wear because they don't have heating, as well as a dead mouse lying in a trap right out in the open. And he called what he witnessed throughout his DPS tour deeply disturbing. He also, of course, is calling on the governor to do more to fix these conditions. Now, obviously, to the extent that he can, the mayor also needs to do stuff to fix these conditions, but obviously Detroit has an, a gigantic financial problem right now, which makes it a little bit harder. But kids are suffering. They have to wear coats in the, uh, the winter, in the summer, they get heat stroke because it's so hot and they don't have air conditioning or fans to run in a lot of these schools. But uh, we also have some uh, visual evidence for you. Uh, teachers and people who work at these schools have been tweeting out a number of different photos. Let's start bringing those up. Does your school look like this? It's just a destroyed staircase there. Uh, you're going to see in this next one buckling floors, Jesus. traps out in the open, uh, mushrooms in this next one, just mushrooms growing. So apparently some life can be sustained in these schools. Uh, in the next one, you're seeing again the floor just buckling. God knows what's growing under there that's causing that. Oh, the ceiling right there. Just water pooling through, not being fixed. Uh, a shot of food that apparently is being served. Some moldy bread thing. Jesus. Expected to eat. Uh, next, access to water. A little bit complicated when it doesn't actually run to those machines and they're broken. Uh, this is especially sad, this next one. Apparently children with disabilities don't need toilet seats. Wow. So That would be 20 or $30, which they do not have to spend, apparently. That's amazing. I mean, I'm just wondering when we're going to finally hold these teachers accountable for destroying this school and for, you know, destroying public education in this country. I yeah. mean, it's really the teacher's fault, right? Okay, That's so, what some people say. So whenever we have these clowns oh, comment on our videos where we talk about very clear instances of minority groups being targeted by police or minority groups living in poverty and these clowns comment to us and they say well what can you expect I mean they're black they're lazy oh what do you expect these Mexicans are criminals minorities don't work as hard they don't value education as much no no, no. understand that that's not what's happening in this country we live in a country that used to value education as the great equalizer, mm -hmm. but now access to education is solely dependent on what your socioeconomic status is. And so if you're from a lower socioeconomic status and you happen to live in this area, this is the kind of school that you're able to go to. This is your big opportunity to lift yourself up by the yeah. bootstraps and be successful. This country has a huge issue when it comes to institutional racism. This is one example of that, okay? But more than anything, those who are born in underprivileged, you know, situations, lower socioeconomic statuses, do not have the same opportunities as those growing up in middle class or wealthy neighborhoods. They just don't. Yeah. And so we don't have those opportunities anymore. We need to do something to fix it. I'm so happy that these teachers are raising awareness about this situation they've been dealing with for years now. Yeah. And here's the question. If you really care about this country and you really care about opportunity, well then you should be fighting to ensure that people pay their fair share of taxes, especially when they're in the top 1%, so we can properly fund the same schools and the same institutions that gave people the opportunities that made them wealthy in the first place, yeah. right? But we don't do that anymore. We have now created a system where the wealthy take advantage of all these opportunities, they become successful, and then they shut the door right behind them and they hoard the money for themselves. They shut the door and then they begin insulting people on the other side of it. That's exactly right. Okay, so we have all these ridiculous discussions among Republicans regarding patriotism. Here's what patriotism is. Giving back to your country after you have taken advantage 
advantage of all the resources available to you, yeah. right? But they don't care about that. Patriotism isn't supporting troops for a preemptive war in the Middle East, okay? Yes. Patriotism is making sure that you take care of your own, that you make sure that the youth in this country have the same fucking opportunities that you have, and they don't care about that. They don't care about that. Stories like this enrage me because the great equalizer that we had in this country at one time no longer exists. It just doesn't. You continue to earn that defender of millennials title. Yes. It's not even defender of yeah. millennials. It's defender of American opportunities. Yeah, yeah, and and they would they would say, well, they still technically aren't barred from accomplishing anything. Like, imagine every day that being the situation that you're supposed to learn pre-calc in. Like, imagine <laughs> what little if there's a bee in a room, it's distracting during a test. Can you imagine growing up in these sorts of situations? So that's the kids, obviously, mm -hmm. but the, the teachers too. Like teachers get openly disrespected in this country just constantly. Teachers go in day after day to, to work in this school. No, no, no. They're not being paid millions to work in a shitty mushroom infested school, but they still do it. What incentive do teachers have to be teachers in this country? Just to do the best that they can for the kids. That, That's I mean, literally it. The people who are still teaching in this school district and have fought through all of these unsafe, unhealthy conditions just to ensure that they can continue educating the youth, I, I think they are American heroes, yeah. right? Because they're not doing it for the money. They're not doing it for glitz or glam. For fame. They're, they, you're right. They're constantly criticized. They're constantly put down. There are no incentives other than your passion to educate others. Exactly. And, and to me, they earn all the respect that I could possibly give them. Yeah, and look, Detroit is perhaps with these photos the clearest example of the conditions that they have to uh, work under, but we can find this all over the country. We're the richest country in the history of the world, as Jimmy Dore says, but we unfortunately still have schools like this. And we shouldn't be insulting them. As Jimmy said, we should be bringing them out at the beginning of football games and cheering them because they are serving their country in the way that others that we rightfully cheer for uh, do. And one final comment to the, the, the politicians, mostly Republican, but not exclusively, who don't care about this, who don't address the problems when they develop, when water gets infested with lead, as we've been talking about recently, or when schools are like this. When you look at that and you don't want to change the system, like someday mm -hmm. the kids who are in that school leave that school. When they leave that school, who do you want them to be? Like, do you want them to be people who never had a chance of learning anything and then go out there and either grind out a living at best they can or some become criminals because of the experiences they that they had? Or do you want them to come out ambitious, educated people who are going to make the country better. You have that choice to get one or the other, and you make that choice when you defund schools. I don't, I don't think that they care about these opportunities for kids. I don't think they care about ensuring that these their kids- Their country, that's who live, they're surrounded by, I know, they should. I know, but we, not, we, don't, we don't have a collectivist society anymore. It's very indi individualistic. It's very us versus them, me versus everyone else. I'm going to build my mansion and have a moat around it, and I yeah. don't care about it. That, that's the country that we're living in right now, and we need to move away from that. Yeah. Okay, because at one point, we did value education. We did value opportunities for young people, and we also valued innovation in this country. You can't have innovation without education. Yeah. And, and that's what we're now just completely disregarding because the wealthy don't want minorities and those in lower socioeconomic statuses to, to become wealthy or to become successful. Okay? Inside, they're fucking themselves over. They want to they wanna privatize education so they can make sure that their kids get a good private education and everyone else who can't afford it can just screw off and that's it. Well, let's see how that works out for them.